remember that we didn't know whether it was going to work, whether you could use television to teach young children. That was our first, first uh, question. Once we believed we saw an answer to that, we knew we had to begin to develop funding for the second season. And naturally, we went back to the same people that helped fund the first season. And the Office of Education was extremely pleased and, and indeed participated for quite a long time. I'm going to say 10 years, maybe longer, maybe 15 years. Not, not at the same half, half level. But for many years, they were the core of our support with foundations contributing the rest. We also knew from the very beginning that we couldn't count on any of that in the long run, that we, try, we would have to try to develop uh, income streams of our own. And I don't know whether it was in the second year, probably in the second year we began to look at the issue of licensing, and which has obviously become very important to us in the long run. Joan and I regularly went down to uh, the Office of Education. First we had Doc Howe, who was a strong supporter. Then we had Frank Keppel, who was the next Commissioner of Education, a strong supporter. Sidney Marlin was the next Commissioner of Education, another strong supporter. Uh, now during, I think it was Sid Marlin's tenure, uh, Head Start began to be developed. So that was going on then too. The next Secretary of HEW at that point was Caspar Weinberg. And the Nixon administration was quite a different era for us than the Johnson administration had been for sure. And Joan and I went down to talk to Caspar Weinberger about Sesame Street's need for money. I'd never been in a secretary's office before. As I remember it, I thought that, I, I thought that it was like a football field. The office was so big. We were sitting down in a group of a sofa, or a couple of sofas and a couple of chairs with Caspar Weinberger, his assistant, and Joan and myself. And Joan and I were, were giving what by then had become a very well-tried uh, act. That is how you, how you present this. We would had a lot of experience. Telephone rang at the other end of the office. It was at least 25 yards away. It was a long way away. So Weinberger goes over to the other end of the office to answer the telephone. And his assistant looks at us. And he said, you know, it's terrible that you two have to come down here. Maurice Stans has that money in his safe. Now, that was the precursor to Watergate. That, the, the diversion of money by Maurice Stans was what helped produce Watergate. Of course, we didn't know it at the time, but looking back on it, this assistant says, it's terrible you have to do this. Maurice Stans has that money in his safe. So the, the money uh, from the federal government gradually declined over the long run for Sesame Street, and it gradually, we have none now for Sesame Street. Federal government and other agencies has supported uh, new projects, and currently, through AID, supports several of our foreign co-productions. But the original money changed. Now how did the, well, you mentioned that the Nixon administration was, was very different than the Johnson administration in terms of Well, Johnson has been the education, com, education president. And uh, Doc Howe, as I said, had been a friend and was commissioner of education. Uh, I'm missing a name here now. A special assistant in the White House, Doug Cater, was very interested in education, very responsible for getting the Public Broadcasting Act passed. So there was a whole confluence of people who were interested in this. Nixon administration, of course, took on public broadcasting and tried to uh, zero it out, attacked it. And we were part of public broadcasting, and not, not structurally but our program was shown on public broadcasting, so we were uh, not in the same favor in the Nixon administration that we were in the Johnson administration. 